Welcome to Public Forum, a community outreach program produced at North Idaho College on the shores of Lake Coeur d'Alene. Featuring guests from around the globe addressing a wide variety of subjects, Public Forum serves to educate and enlighten. Please join host and moderator, political scientist Tony Stewart, in welcoming today's guest. Welcome to today's program as we discuss the topic, Bringing Diversity to the Inland Northwest by Conferences, both in the Spokane area and in Northern Idaho, in Coeur d'Alene in particular. Uh, over the last few years, we have brought conferences here that were very diverse, and it has a lot to do with not only impacting our area economically, but uh, philosophically, and, and those who present here take a message back that shows a positive image of what we are attempting to do as a people here in the Inland Northwest. In order to carry out this subject, I'm so pleased to welcome to the program Rocky Owens, who is the coordinator of student services at Lewis Clark State College in Coeur d'Alene, and he holds a BA degree from Lewis Clark State College, and his master's degree is from the University of Wales um, at Carterville. Uh, I'm also proud to say that Rocky is a former student at North Idaho College in political science. Uh, what we're going to talk about particularly today is uh, the Pacific Association of College Registrars and Admissions Officers coming to Coeur d'Alene for a conference that's going to be very diverse, and we'll play off of that as well as talk about some other conferences. Rocky, it's great to see you, and welcome to the program. Thank you, Tony. It's good to be here. And as always, I'm so pleased to have our regular panelist, Janelle Burke, and she shall commence the question today on our topic. Rocky, welcome uh, to the program. And we're going to be talking a little bit about a conference that you're going to hold here in Coeur d'Alene. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the theme of the conference? Can you tell us how that theme sure. was developed? The, the theme is uh, discover the direction you can take. And, and essentially what we're looking at with this theme is we're hoping that we can uh, empower people to look at the direction that others have taken that have had influence uh, in history, we, we have two keynote speakers that will be part of this conference. Uh, Ms. Loretta Ross uh, is one speaker. She's been part of your panel here and been to this area. Um, but essentially, we, we look at her and we see that, that she's a very inspirational person. We see that, that she can certainly point uh, people in, in a direction that they can take. Uh, more importantly, this conference is for student services uh, personnel, and student services personnel are really at the forefront of working with students. And these, um, college for anybody is a very, very influential time in their life. I think it's a time where you do, not only as a student, take a new direction, but also um, you take direction from those um, around you, faculty and staff alike. And um, I can attest to that as, as being from Coeur d'Alene, that North Idaho College and, and Lewis Clark State College both made huge impacts on my life. Um, as did other uh, uh, experiences, and, and they essentially gave me direction. Uh, but for, for student serv services personnel, people working in, in for instance, financial aid, uh, people working in admissions, uh, these people have enormous um, uh, ability to affect students through, uh, through programming, through minority scholarships, uh, through diversifying programming, um, through looking at ways uh, to, to really enlighten and, and, and enhance the, the campus environment. Um, I often think that um, universities are, are kind of uh, bastions of ideology, if you will, and uh, that um, we have a big job to, to protect um, ideas and, uh, and essentially um, as student services personnel in this conference, um, I'm, I'm very pleased that, that we can hopefully empower and uh, encourage people to discover that are working directly with, stu with students to discover the direction that they can take. Rocky, I want to play up on that. And uh, a lot of these conferences have hundreds of people here. I'm thinking of one that we had some years ago with 900 delegates from around the world on empowering women. Uh, your conference uh, will have people from a lot of different states. Share a little bit with us what that means from a perspective of what we call diversity both in gender and sure. race and all. Uh, just spend some time talking about how that will impact our area, this conference sure. being an example of others that have done likewise. Well, first of all, I think you know this, this area, we don't have a lot of ethnic diversity. We don't have a lot of different people from different areas. So I think by having different people come from different areas, you can certainly see that there are different folks out there and you can get different ideas about things. Um, you can just learn that there are, are different ways of thinking about things and different ways of living, different ways of approaching life. And 
All of that is very good because, um, let's face it, in, in today's society, um, it's a very, I mean, we live in a very multi uh, national world that it's not just about nations, it's about people getting together from all different places. And I think it's really critical for people, especially of northern Idaho and eastern Washington who, and western Montana, who perhaps have not had exposure to, to different ideas and different ways of thinking, to, to, have the, to have chances to make personal contact with these people, hear their stories. And, and not only that, but to see that, that these people uh, do have stories to tell that are very human, and um, as if I can just tell my own personal experience, I grew up in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and um, I craved for for different experiences. And, and I often, I, I can honestly say that I really didn't get any kind of diverse experience until I really came to North Idaho College, and it was through programs such as the Popcorn Forum and even. Um, on issues, I remember we had one several years ago, Mysteries of the Universe, I believe, or something like this, Tony. Mysteries of Our Time. Mysteries of Our Time, yeah. And um, my goodness, we were exposed to people uh, who were experts on, on, on Bigfoot, uh, experts on, on uh, uh, kind of outer space life. I, it was a, an extraordinary conference, and, and it, it not only opened my eyes, but I, I just thought um, this is a great chance. And, and What's, and, and then other, uh, we, we've, we've had conferences with Clay Jenkins, for instance, and, and he's, uh, that's, that's added another dimension because um, in, in his role as Thomas, Thomas Jefferson, um, you, you're really able to connect with that character and really able to make an impact. I think, you know, that, that's the one dimension. The other dimension is the fact that as, as people come together, you really, I think these conferences are a lot about, you know, there's the big, buzzword in, in business is networking and um, in a sense there's a lot of, of, of growth that occurs from your peers because you dialogue with them and you get ideas and you have workshops and you, you take back uh, a lot of inspiration uh, from these these uh, these conferences. Um, you know the Greeks did this with their they had what they called the symposiums and a, suppo a symposium was Literally, it's Greek for a drinking party, <laughs> and they and they would get together and, and discussing ideas. Yeah, and they were they, more they, clear at the beginning than the end. Yeah, at the end, exactly. <laughs> and uh, uh, with with yours, I think we have popcorn, don't we? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, the same the same uh, principle is there is that you know we we are uh, celebrating ideas. So and, and a lot of those people who come into the conferences. They, for we locally, they share so much information that we use within our life. But secondly, I'd like for you to talk about, as they discover more about we as a people, what do they take back to wherever they're from? Well, I think you take back a, your, a new self, a new change self. And uh, um, I think more than anything, personal testimony and a personal change. Um, you know, if you've had a life-changing experience, if you've been to a conference and you heard a speaker and you come back and you're changed, um, I think it's almost like you, you come back and not only are you excited about what you've learned, but you also share that with other people. And I think that's kind of a, a incumbent upon you as, as if you've been to a conference, you've ever been affected mm -hmm. by it, that you come back and you share those ideas with people and that you perhaps say, you know, have you ever thought about it in this way? Have you ever thought about doing it this way? In my in my instance, um, you know, we we might come back from a conference like this, and and, and I work in admissions a lot, and we might say, um, have have we ever looked at our standards for how we admit students, for mm -hmm. instance, and um, are we in a sense looking at at um, a, a fair and equitable way to 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 bring students in? Are we not and not only fairness, but are we encouraging that? And just to take, take that a step farther, at, at the university where I work for, Lewis Clark State College, uh, we, have, um, we, we have Japan Week, we have uh, Native American Awareness Week. Um, but, and, and I can tell you that these ideas were spawned from conferences like this and people came mm -hmm. back and changed. One other area I want to get to, and then I'll go back to Janelle. Uh, so many conferences that come here, I'm thinking about the, those who come here and they leave and take some information back to their home communities. Mm -hmm. But, and this is not a criticism, but some of those conferences, they are closed to the professionals, like in your case, the registrars and the uh, admission officers. Mm -hmm. Can we do a better job with the cooperations organizations of while these people are here, 
having more exchange with the people in our area. Now at North Idaho College, sure. we do them on this program right. and share them with the public, and a lot of people come to the, the symposiums locally, but I'm thinking about conferences like yours, and there are a lot of others, in business, been, labor, and all. Yeah. What can we do that we're not doing so that there's an enrichment of our local people in the inland Northwest before they leave? I, I, good question. I think that we can open up a lot of like the keynote speaker addresses and, and other things to, to people. I, um, I think it's if you have some open venues, I mean, we will have uh, in a conference such as this, in, in any conference, you're going to have the professionals that flock to the, the special workshops and the special forums and, and this kind of thing. But I think the key is that many times in these conferences, they'll have keynote addresses, they'll have workshops. And I think those are the two areas where we can really involve the public at large. Um, I think if you see a conference like this, um, uh, we will have uh, two, two keynote speakers, not only Loretta Ross, but we'll also have um, Benny Lambert, who's from North Harris College in, in Houston. And these people are, are extraordinarily inspirational, and um, we plan to make these um, open to the, the entire uh, public here at North Idaho College. We're working on that right now. And maybe media coverage and all that. Well, we we are still. That's we're about a year out from this sure. conference. I mean, when, but, when the time oh comes. yes, definitely. And uh, we're going to have some workshops too. This is just um, as I said. We're going to have uh, Benny Lambert. We're going to also have uh, Loretta uh, Ross here. And as and we've this is just the tip of the iceberg. We've got about ten more uh, national speakers coming in for this conference. And uh, we 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 have already just confirmed these two from the start. And I'm, I'm sure that we'll, within sure. time we'll have the other eight confirmed. So. This is going to be fun, a fun conference. But you're talking uh, to a group of professionals, and there'll be some very professional people there, registrars and admissions officers. And uh, registrars and admissions officers are a particular kind of profession. Mm -hmm. they, they actually deal with the admission of students to colleges and mm -hmm. deal with, with the registration of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but they also go out, I would think, and do a fair amount of, of uh, looking for students, sure. encouraging students sure. to come. So what are some of the ways that, that they can be encouraged, uh, very practical, hands-on ways that sure. they can be encouraged to be more diverse in, their, um, in the students sure. that they admit to their schools? Well, that's always a tough question. Like, for instance, Lewis Clark State College, we actively recruit on the Native American reservations in this area. Um, I think you can also go to um, atypical uh, high school groups that you would look for college students. For instance, um, you might, um, I think we're going to be doing a lot more actively recruiting um, for the sake of my college. Again, I can't speak for every college, but in the, in, for the sake of Lewis Clark State College, I can say that we are looking to more actively recruit from um, inner city type groups of people. Uh, gener first generation students that have not ever had a college experience before have not had that chance to go on and, and look at uh, for, for opportunities, um, uh, post-secondary school opportunities. And we know that education and, and conferences as part of that education is a huge huge, uh, makes a uh, huge impact on, on people's lives. So to sum up your answer, I think that, you know, we, we will be in, in admissions, we, we have typically focused on, on one area, and that has just been the college-bound student. And I think we are going to look at ways in, in, in all colleges, University of Idaho, Boise State University, uh, North Idaho College, through their student services learning centers, are looking to, to bring people up that are, that are perhaps not in traditionally uh, bound college groups of students to a level where they can perform. And often they just, students need um, just a little bit more assistance on a certain level. And then they can take what they have with basic, basic skills and change the world. I would think that one of the things you would want to expose students to as well as uh, just the admissions process would be also the financial aid process because many students perhaps feel they're, they're, not, sure. they're not going to be able to go to school because of the finances that are required, particularly in uh, private schools, that's probably an issue. And I would think admissions officers are very cognizant of that and would want to um, find out good ideas from other schools as to how they approach those yes. problems. Good point. I mean, finances is, is a big key issue, and um, you know, um, fortunately, the the federal uh, uh, financial programs have progressed 
um, to some level that uh, you can you can get some assistance to provide for your education. But certainly, I think we can do um, a whole lot more. Um, public education is one thing; private education is a whole other matter. Um, I think. Um, a lot of private schools are these days feeling some amount of pressure to uh, to diversify their student bodies, um, and and I think that 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 they they can stand to gain from that because most studies show that students have the most monumental, um, most significant educational learning experience from the peers around them. Um, my director is very keen on saying you are a product of the company you keep, and um, that that company, if 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 it's enriching and stimulating, um, and we know this even from cognitive development of children, it can be very enriching to uh, one's life experience. So um, I'm getting off that question a little bit, but to get back to your question, that that is a topic at a con at a conference such as this. How do we provide financial means for people that come from disadvantaged backgrounds? Um, and and we are working uh, very closely with the financial aid programs of, of the government as well as looking at other ways to um, bring scholarships and, and there's there's also um, very creative ways of doing this through endowments and through uh, donations from corporations um, that that and we always have a number of workshops that deal with these direct subjects. Also when um this conference comes. I want to spend a little time on it, although our, our overall topic is about all the kinds of mm -hmm. conferences and um, the intermingling of people uh, while in a community that, that enriches the community. Uh, what kind of attendance are you anticipating? Conferences vary from very small to very large. Of course, the larger the conference, the more diversity sure. you will have. Sure. Um, we're expecting between four to 600 people at this conference. And again, th these are going to come mostly from the Western Pacific states of Alaska, California, Oregon, Washington, Nevada, Wyoming, Arizona, and Idaho. Um, and the economic input or output of this conference will be, um, uh, excuse me, will be monumental. I, I, I did speak with the Coeur d'Alene Chamber of Commerce and I, was, and I was tempting to get some kind of figure on that exactly, but uh, it's, it's in past conferences something like this has brought in, I mean, nearly a million dollars to communities. What's so extraordinary about this conference, the, the PACRO conference being held here next year in, in November in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, is the fact that this conference is usually held in, in larger cities like Seattle. Uh, next year will be Tucson. Um, the year before that was in LA. Um, in, in big, big places. And to have it come to Coeur d'Alene is really, really significant. Um, I think uh, this is one of the largest conferences that the Coeur d'Alene Resort is, is, has ever hosted. In fact, it's, it's so mammoth that we're having to call on other hotels to assist us with it. Um, and um, it's a real daunting task to put it together, I can tell you this much. So even if you have, say, 500, 600 delegates, you really have more people now because a lot of them have spouses oh, with sure. them or, or, or family members that are not part of the conference. You bet, yeah. And, and Tony, I, you know, um, just to get back to that subject there for a minute, if, if we could, with the whole subject of being in, in Idaho, um, we've talked a little bit about the importance of having a conference uh, of this magnitude and having all these different people come in from different places uh, to Idaho, to Coeur d'Alene. Um, but how does, that, uh, how does that affect, I mean, we, we talked about how that affects the area, but how do you think that, that maybe... Um, it was in terms of decisions to bring this conference here. I, I just sometimes I ponder and I think to myself, how did we get this conference to come to Coeur d'Alene, mm -hmm. Idaho? And I was pondering that a, a few months ago, and I know that my good friend Kurt Koenig, who's assisting me with the planning of this conference, uh, Kurt Koenig is the director of admissions for University of Oregon. Um, the plan to have this conference in Coeur d'Alene was actually made about five years ago, I believe, and. Um, there was a lot of resistance to bring in this conference here. And, 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 and fortunately, um, people were able, uh, when we made the promotion for this conference at, at the last conference in Victoria, um, we had, I had delegates coming up to me from Arizona, from Southern California. And they were asking me, you know, what's it going to be like there? Because they've, they've, unfortunately, there, there is a stereotype. And it was so refreshing to say to them that we've closed a chapter and we're about new beginnings. And this is, this is, this, 
you know, Coeur d'Alene has never stood for any kind of, of, of discrimination or or any special interests or special groups. And to welcome you all to the to Coeur d'Alene is just a mark of, of how we intend to to diverse, diversify our our culture. There are other things that can happen at these conferences. I know you've mentioned something about possibilities, but Dr. Michael Burke, the president of Orthodox College, was successful after some campaigning to bring here last summer uh, to the Coeur d'Alene Resort and Orthodox College the um, National uh, Summer Institute for Community College Presidents, model of the United States. It was really interesting because I was asked to speak to that conference about our history uh, of human rights and struggle against um, um, you know, racism or, or hatred. And it was just such an incredibly exhilarating experience. The presidents and vice presidents, others were there, were so receptive when the data that we had and how we presented. So what I'm trying to say is that the result of that was that I wound up um, receiving invitations around the country to speak, and I spent four days in Florida speaking at a college with 14,000 students, and uh, was invited to another one in Maryland that we'll, I will go to later. The point is that when you talk about these conferences and all, and when people come and visit with us, if there's certain kinds of interchanges, there is that after effect that is that you may be also going to other parts of the country to share your message of what we believe and what diversity is in human mm -hmm. rights. So I just wanted to make that note that it, it has these other ripple effects. And, and that will be important, I think, for people to come here and see that Coeur d'Alene is a wonderful place that, that uh, is open to all uh, walks and ways of life and, and that people have congregated for that purpose and that we've chosen as our theme the direction that you can take I think will all lend itself to showing what Coeur d'Alene is about. And one final thing, next week on this program we'll be having some guests and they'll be talking about the popcorn form and it's going to be something totally different. We have 13 co-sponsors including all the colleges in the area uh, which will be happening uh, in, in March. Uh, and that is uh, like Lois Clark and the University of Idaho and Gonzaga and Whitworth and Eastern Washington University and Spokane Falls Community College and Washington State University. So a lot more of that kind of thing is happening and we'll be having programs both at Gonzaga and here. I'm one of those great promoters uh, th that the whole Inland Northwest is one place and uh, I believe that border should be invisible and I think we should all work together and, and so this is the kind of thing that can happen. We all are enriched by working together in our region as well as bringing people from other parts of the country. On that editorial note, I'll turn it back to Janelle. Well, you've brought with us um, a, a T-shirt that shows your logo and something about I that, did. and I want to give you an opportunity to show uh, what that's going to look like and a little bit I'm about delighted. it. Um, and, this uh, is, I don't know how well the, the cameras can... Cover your back there. But I don't know how well the, the, the cameras can pick that up, but this is uh, our, our logo here that we've, we've chosen for at the conference. We sold these t-shirts already at the 2002 conference, uh, which I just came from, which was in Victoria, Canada. Um, and there's the compass on there as, as well as uh, the, our motto, discover the direction you can take. Um, and again, the, the dates for that conference will be November 2nd through the 5th. And if I, if I can just say so, Tony, I think that if I can say to your audience here today that um, we will be having media coverage and we will be having announcements about the different workshops. Um, of course, we'll have lots of, of colleges involved in this, this conference, but we, we will have definitely the, the keynote sessions and many of the workshops will be open to the public, and we, we really hope that uh, everybody in this community can be involved in those. So we're doing this show in February, it's running in February, and the conference is November, so they should contact you at Lewis Clark State College uh, if they wish to uh, have more information. And, We'll even be generous enough if you wish to give you a, f a telephone number if you'd like for the Oh, to, well, by all means. Or, or email, whatever uh, that might be, that <laughs> people would like to uh, uh, get sure. more information. Uh, if you want to, to contact me, uh, just call Lewis Clark State College, uh, and that's here in Coeur d'Alene, uh, the, the Coeur d'Alene um, Extension Campus, and that number is area code 208 6707 I'm going to interrupt to say that people who think like I do in numbers, uh, they want it again. It's 208 666 6707. That's it. Okay. And do, do you, you have a website too? We do indeed. Um, our website is just our, uh, the standard one, www.lcsc.edu. And um, once you get that's to the main uh, campus uh, website, there's a hyperlink to the Coeur d'Alene campus, and it'll take you right there and you'll have all kinds of email and wide web contact. And information. Absolutely. Right. Janelle Burke.
We've talked a little bit about what kinds of things conferences do for the local community, but what kinds of things do conferences do for the for a person, let's say like yourself, who's recently been to a conference. You come home all uh, really rejuvenated, um, feeling good about what you've learned. How do you put these things into practice, though, well, when you come home? I think it's like one idea at a time. You, you catch a good idea, and... Um, you just think of it, and sometimes you don't implement it right away, but you're going along and suddenly you remember this or you remember you had this experience or you remember this idea, and um, it just inspires you. And a lot of it is just inspiration that carries you through the year. And, um, you know, of course you can't go home and implement every idea and, and do everything overnight, but you can uh, be inspired to use those ideas um, through through all your projects and and I mean I can tell you that coming home I've I've got lots of great ideas of how to uh, coming home from the last conference I've I've got lots of great ideas about how we can work uh, more with interchange with um, for instance the Coeur d'Alene tribe and uh, I was just down there last week in fact uh, doing some work um, in Plummer um, and. Uh, trying to, to develop some programs there that will allow those students to, to uh, come to LCSC. But I think, you know, you ask a, a really good question. Um, I, I think um, a, lot of, a lot of that comes from the inspiration that comes through um, an idea. And you just, you, you get an idea, you see something. Um, I can give you another example just real quick. Lewis Clark State College is um, here in Coeur d'Alene, for instance. We are implementing a new program with North Idaho College whereby um, students can be simultaneously enrolled both at NIC and LCSC. On that note, we have to bring the permanent conclusion. On behalf of Janelle and our staff, Rocky Owens, thank you for being on the program. Uh, it's been great seeing you and, and uh, dealing with this important subject. And our subject again today was bringing diversity to the Inland Northwest via conferences. That's one way. There are certainly other ways, too. And, we uh, commend Rocky Owens for his work as the coordinator of student services at Lewis Clark State College, and he's also working with us very much in relation to uh, next month when we have our um, major conference here on uh, confronting hate and how to combat it. I hope you've enjoyed our program as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you, and that you'll be with us again next week at this same time when we'll discuss you another subject. Until then, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. Recorded on the campus of North Idaho College, Public Forum is the longest-running in-house college production on PBS. Each episode is pre-recorded live and is an educational outreach from North Idaho College. Please join us at this same time next week for another edition of Public Forum on this public television station. <laughs>